<laughs> we have a problem. We have a problem. I need you guys to help me. Welcome, replay viewers. Hello, everybody. It's Tanglewood Sue here. Uh, all right, here's where we're at. We were gonna do some stamping today. Uh, from our last video, well, we did the unboxing video, right? Y'all, I'm trying to follow my steps. I can't find the stamps. I can't find the stamps. We we're gonna go do the stamps today. And then I had a meeting and I'm like, okay, 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 I'll just go grab the stamps. And I found the stamps that I, hey Devlin, hey Victoria, I found the stamps that I washed, but I can't find the rest of the pack. And I remember while we were on the live last week, I pulled them off of the pack. So I called Jana, cause Jana always knows where everything is. Hey Ann, I called her up and she goes, well, I mean, you didn't put them in the trash. And I immediately thought, or did I? So I'm late because I was digging through the trash and I did find this in the trash, which is what they would have been stuck to, or at least a version of it. So I dug through my trash. <laughs> I can't find them. Oh my God, this is so frustrating. So, we're gonna have to change gears unless you guys have any Heather unless you guys have any idea where like where I put them this is making me insane oh my god and I should have just started so I found all my other I mean y'all know me so here's my box oh we go yeah we're going on a we're going on a hunt so here's the box where they live so I have I have the Christmas evergreen one. I have this, I have this. And then I found the, I found the, the sleeve for the stamps that we want to do. I found that here. Okay, so here's the sleeve. This is what we're looking for. Oh my gosh. Here it is. So, and here's the other piece. So anyway, let's move on. But we need to figure out, we need to figure out another plan. We've got to figure out another plan because I think, all right, give me some ideas of what you guys do when you lose things. Like there could be that they are wrapped in, like I do this a lot, where I'm working on a palette. And I grab, and I don't want my paints to dry out, right? So I grab a palette, I grab a bag, like here. Okay, because I was working on that. I was working on that. And then what I'll do is I'll wrap it up with this. And then I'll completely forget. Just completely forget that that's in there. So here I was set up. Set up for us to do this today. I found this one. I found the brayer. I found the ink. I found the projector. Do you think there's, hold on a second. If any of you are on here with me, I would just welcome any ideas you might have. It, uh, I'm going over here to where the projector is. I just didn't want to keep not going live. Could, did I set it? <gasps> you guys! You guys always help me. I've been looking for an hour. There they are. They're on the projector. Oh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I wouldn't have found it. I wouldn't have found I did that was not staged. Y'all know I don't stage things. <clears throat> Y'all know I don't. Oh stop. Oh stop. Turn around. Um, oh my goodness gracious. Okay, all right, so now that we've got that, I'm a little discombobulated, 
Betty, I did. I retraced my steps a hundred times. I was like, I did this, I did this, I did this, I did this. I walked by that projector, I looked on the shelves. It was only once I was going live with you guys that I was like, hey Pam, that I was like, are they in the projector? I really wish, I really wish I thought of that, you guys. I really, really wish I had thought of that before I dug through the freaking trash. All right, let me get everything. There we go. Okay. Goodness gracious. So let's practice a little bit. So I took everything apart. Hi everybody, it's Tango and Sue. Welcome. <laughs> Actually, I do have some other ideas of things we're gonna try because of that. Um, so what's, go what's going on today, Margaret? What's going on today? We have painted this uh, hall tree. I've taken the top off because it was kind of wobbly. And for those of you just joining us, we have painted it with Miss Lillian's No Wax Chalk Paint available from my website. I'm so excited. I've applied with Google and with TikTok for my um, all of the things I sell to be direct links. I'm super excited about that. They were all denied. They were all denied, but I understand that that's what happens. They all get denied and then they all get approved, but it is what it is. I wanna go over what we've used. So we've used the Miss Lillian's. The base Miss Lillian's color, for those of you playing along at home, is Artfully Happy, okay? Really nice, buttery, kind of farmhouse yellow. Then I did some highlights with Urban Farmhouse. Really great mustard, has a lot of green in it. And then we actually used Pumpkin Spice to go over all the edges and give just some nice dimension. So I finished getting all of that painted. And now what I wanna do, the idea was that we were gonna do um, a Ukraine, an homage to a Ukrainian pattern. We're not really gonna do as much as I thought there because I think for my client, um, we're just not going to go too crazy on all the colors. We're not going to do too crazy on all the colors, but I do want to kind of experiment with you guys and kind of think through some things and see if Lori jumps on here. Lori, are you on here? Um, I know they didn't. It's like, you need to put your shipping and I'm like, oh my God, it's just whenever you want to connect the dots of anything a Shopify and anything else. You just have to accept that it's going to get bad before it gets worse. And then it's going to get better. <laughs> it's, it's just like, I know, where is Nick? All right, so let's discuss some of our options, shall we? Because I was like, if I don't have the stamps, I still got to go live. We got to figure something out. So we do have the stamps now. Um, and I do have the ink. And the ink is nice because it's a little bit raised. I do have my brayer um, and I also have my stamping pad. So there's just a lot of different ways you can do this. You can put your ink in the stamping pad and then you can take your block and then you can kind of press it down. You can do that. You can leave this on the ground, pour your ink into here, take your brayer on there and then get it smooth. I mean. It's really like, oh, this is the one. It's really like what works for you. What works for your brain? Nothing for mine, obviously. So we are going to do the hall tree and we are going to do white on yellow because that will be, um, we'll get a lot of pattern, but it won't be, ah! it'll just be like, nice. We're going for the kind of that bone inlay look. But since I couldn't find the stamps, okay, we have that. I started looking around for other alternatives and I found this stencil, which in and of itself, I don't think will work, but I do like these, these corners. See that? And I think that on the edges could be very nice. Where is that? Yeah. Could even kind of go at an angle. Oh, that's what I was gonna do. Feel like I could, can y'all see that? 
if we just mask off and use this just as an edge, I thought that could be kind of cool. Um, this is a little bit more mandala-like, but Lori also said that she liked the leaves of another stencil, so I have, and just yell out if there's one that you see that you like. Um, I found this one which I thought we might use. This one, I just feel like the damask thing is done. I think we're done with damask, don't y'all think? Um, but I definitely like these leaves, which I thought we could use to kind of go up the side a little bit, okay? And I also found my leaf roller by Artistic Painting Studio that I also, feel like we could use in different areas to give us the leaves going up the side. So I, yeah, I think the leaves are good. So now we have too many things to choose from. What I, I've got to, what I want to do is get a damp rag so that we can, which does she like? Well, last time we voted and she liked the stamps. She liked the stamps. But, you know, I only started looking at different things because I couldn't find the stamps today. Um, so let's look at some, let's look at some of the stamping action we have here. And just kind of maybe play around with that. I'm gonna keep a damp rag because I, I'm taking all these off. Um, in case I don't like how it looks, I do like the base coat here. I don't want to screw it up. I'm just going to be honest with you. I don't want to screw it up. I don't want to screw it up. Um, cause I like what I've done so far. All right. Okay. So let's start, let's just start putting some ink on here. I think. Yeah, that's just gummy. There's nothing on there. I just want to make sure. And let's practice doing some of these. Which one did I open? That must have been that one. I also wonder if we can use this ink. I wonder if we can use the ink on the roller. You're seeing my you're seeing you're seeing my brain work in real time, my friends. In real time. So let's pour some of this onto here. Hi, Carissa. Um, and I don't use these a lot. So if you guys have other suggestions, I don't use stamps a lot. So I may not be using these exactly right. Just fine. You like Bohemian stamps? All right. I think we'll start there. I'm just pouring out a lot here. Um, well, let's start with... I don't even know if we need the brayer. I'm kind of using it to push it all in. Let's see what happens if we just take one of our little stampies there and just kind of press it in. Yeah, we get a nice we get a nice stamp. So that's one way to do it. Oh my god, I've got hair everywhere. Um, I think the way to work with these stamps is more is more. <laughs> Let my creative vibes just work. <laughs> I know. I'm all discombobulated. All right. So let's start just like, let's just go on the inside of this and see what we can figure out and see if we like it. Just see if we like it. So I think I'm going to do this. This fits almost perfectly. So I'm going to lay that in. And this has kind of that leaf motif that my client likes, so I'm just pressing that. Oh, that's pretty. Let me make sure you guys can get in here. And I'm a firm believer that stamps don't have to be perfection, okay? They really don't. But let's go all the way around the edge and just see See how much we like it. Okay. 
I want like a, I got my brayer all messed up. I probably should have just saved my brayer to roll on top cleanly instead. Let's see. Yeah. All right, that's working for me. Phew. You like the corners better? Well, they, those were for around here. So why don't we do, why don't we, I guess the way I'm seeing this whole piece is that nothing has to match because it's gonna be cohesive because it's all yellow and it's all white, okay? So we don't need to have, like we can do the corners differently and we can do a mix of everything. I feel like we can do a mix of everything. Leaving work and picking up my hands. Oh, okay. Okay, Carissa, come back and see us. Um, but let's do this, Betty, and then, and then before we go, we'll do one of the corners. We'll do one of the corners for you. So what's, what's nice about this is I, I don't like it to be like perfect, perfect, which is good because it's not even close because it's not perfect at all. Um, there we go. May, hi, may, hi, Maddie. So y'all, I've been a busy little bee. I have been a busy, there we go. I was just pouring out the gel instead of the ink. So I'm just loading up this stamping pad big time and letting it kind of soak in there so I don't have to keep rolling this out and I can kind of keep it from drying out. But I really like the, the IOD inks because they're a little bit on the raised side. But like I said, I can, I can stamp that or I can do that, you know, there's just endless options. It's just how your brain works, really. So I'm just gonna put that in the corner there. But the way I'm seeing this is, is kind of a mismatch. Melissa, all the things that I'm doing. Well, hopefully, I don't know if you guys follow Grace on Broadway. I believe, I believe, Heather, I believe she's on here today. Um, we had the nicest conversation a few weeks ago about me creating a design for some decoupage papers, you guys. Um, very exciting. Um, I was quite honored and I was so excited to be asked until she told me how long I had. <laughs> oh my God. And so, um, sorry, I can't see all the comments. I'm going to let these dry before I go back and try to fill in this little square um, because it's only going to be trouble if I try to fill in that square while it's wet. So I'm going to let it dry. Um, so you guys, I had uh, a little over three weeks or a little less than three weeks to create a uh, three foot by two feet piece of art. And so in true Tanglewood Sioux fashion, I spent two and a half weeks dreaming about it three days painting it but it's done and I love it and I love it and I think what I'm so excited about it's going to be my very first decoupage paper um what I'm really excited about is that I did it in total Tanglewood Sioux style okay so y'all I want you guys to guess what that would be what about it because y'all know me hey Rebecca hey Lorraine um what, how would I, oh, that looks good. How would I do a decoupage paper? Even though, if anybody here really knows me, you know I'm not a huge, here's your hint, I'm not a huge decoupage paper user. Right? Okay? I like doing, I like doing, um, I'm gonna go over here and do this. I like using napkins. Oh, Melissa, I forgot to go look for those napkins. God, you've reminded me 18 times and I keep forgetting. But they're kind of not the vision I'm going for anymore. But 
anyway, um, knowing why I don't use. So the question isn't like, what don't I like about decoupage papers? There's nothing I don't like about them as a paper, as a medium. But for those of you who've been following along for the last five years or so, more than that, I'll do something with Heather. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Well, it's more, it's more than that, Betty. Philosophically speaking, I don't mean to be so annoyingly cryptic, um, but philosophically speaking, there's a way in which I, I don't tend to use decoupage papers um, in my own work for very specific reasons. And I also haven't been that compelled over the years to design my own. I'm gonna go get some white paint and a roller while y'all think that over um, so that I can put these corners on here, Betty, okay? All right, hold on, y'all think about that. So why don't I usually use decoupage papers is the question I wanna ask you guys to think about. It's not a trick question per se. I think it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, she's awesome. She's awesome. Heather. Um, so if y'all aren't familiar, um, uh, it was announced yesterday that I'm one of the first, I'm using Snow uh, Snowflake by Miss Lillian's as a white for this, um, for the stencil. So I'm just putting it in a very, very filthy, not cleaned um, tray that I found. Melissa, that is very true. And you're almost right. You're almost right. Let me see if this is getting pink. Probably needed to not do that in the tray with red. But I don't know, a slight sheen of pink wouldn't be so bad. I'm going to give it to you, Melissa. I think that's very true. I, I do always want, I do like to do it myself. Thank you, Betty. It, it, I feel like it's too confining. And I really... My whole reason for being is to inspire you guys to be unique, to be one of a kind, to not make something the way somebody else's makes something, to not, um, to not have, to not try to emulate somebody else's work. I think you can learn from somebody else's work. I think you can be inspired. I think you can even copy it. I mean, we do that all the time, right? We got in some trouble for it. Um, in order to learn. But in general, I really feel like being creative and being artistic is about finding your own voice. And sometimes it's like, but Sue, I wanna put some flowers on my piece and I don't really know how to paint flowers and I don't wanna learn how to paint flowers, so on some decoupage of some flowers. Awesome, I love that idea. But um, they don't have to be in the, in the uh, layout that the decoupage paper is, do they? I mean, do you, you know what I'm saying? What can you do? What can you do to that decoupage paper that makes it your own? That makes it your own so that it's not just somebody else's art on your piece. Now, I would say the exceptions to that rule are like, if you really wanna have Dolly Parton on your piece of furniture, like Anissa's paper, which is fantastic, by the way, of Dolly Parton, and it's a painting, and it's an original art. Like, I totally get that. But I'm just gonna be straight up honest with you guys. I'm not that kind of artist. I'm not that kind of artist. I'm not gonna be able to do a design like that, at least without a lot of trial and error. It's not the kind of artist that I am. But I can completely understand why, all right, I got this corner, why you would want that kind of decoupage paper of an original art piece on your furniture. Like, so that, that I'm kind of leaving out of the equation. All right, so I'm gonna try to put my hand here, just do that. But in general, I just like to create designs. And let's do the little circles too. You wanna do that? Let's do both. So I'm gonna kind of, Actually, let me get a piece of tape. Let me actually do this in a grown-up manner. Oh my God, what a concept. Um, 
So when Heather reached out to me, she's like, Sue, we'd love to have your design for decoupage. I, first of all, I just could not think of a design that you guys would necessarily want uh, of mine that's replicable that you guys can use. Um, that might just be my own insecurity talking. But I was like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. But then my brain went, oh, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. So um, uh, it, I'm not gonna unveil it yet or anything, but I will tell you that the idea of the decoupage paper that I created is designed to be, uh, it's designed to be a starting off place. It's designed to be, it definitely says Tanglewood Sue. If you know me, you're gonna recognize that design from a mile away. But it, it, I designed it inherently to allow you as creators who want to use it um, to take it to another level in a, a lot of different ways. Hello, Miss Natasha. I'm trying not to give away my unveiling too much behind me, but I set up my camera wrong. So there you go. You're getting a little, you're getting a little peek. You're getting a little peek. Um, so, all right, let's try this. Let's try this. So anyway, I'm super excited. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Um, it'll be unveiled shortly, I'm sure. And uh, all right. You know what? I need to stamp this off. This is not going to work. I'm going to be too. I'm going to be too all over the place with that. Let me get a little brush. Let me get a little a little stamping brush of some kind. This will do. This will do. Um, Sometimes I like to do the roller, but sometimes I recognize that that tool is not gonna work for what, the look I'm going for. So that, that, that's what you're gonna notice. When you see the unveiling of my, my decoupage paper design, it is, it is, I'm gonna give up, I'm gonna make a lot of videos for you guys on how you can um, customize it and just use it as an inspiration point uh, for your own color scheme, for your own design. I'm just super excited about it because I just I just didn't want to do something for you to just stick on your piece. I don't know, like I said, maybe I'm just insecure that way, but I, it's more that I'm, that's not what I'm about. I want you guys to try something new. So I'm really seeing this whole new um, line, this one line as um, hopefully more, if the first one sells, as something really exciting for you guys to use, to try something new with. Okay, how's that? All right. Oh, thank you, Betty. Exactly, it's gonna be, you can use my design as a background. You're gonna be able to use my design and change out some of the colors in it very easily because it's not that complex. Um, anyway, I'm just super excited. So I'm working on that. I just finished my content creation for Daydream Apothecary. Um, so that'll be coming out. I have two projects coming out with Daydream. Um, as soon as the gals, Natasha's been working on the big retreat. I hope you guys are getting your tickets. Let's look at this. Oh, look at that. Oh, I love it. I love it. If I have the patience, I don't know if I have the patience, but if I have the patience, I should definitely replicate this like it's in a it's in a corner but i should definitely replicate it all over we'll see we'll see how much patience i have um so that's what i've been working on. i've got two projects um working on for my daydream content using my uh, neon by nissa had so much fun with that trying them out with the coastals that was that was that was awesome um I'm behind on my blogging because I've had all these other projects going on, but I've been gathering media. I think we're going to be able to jump back into that this week, um, get some more content up there. My son's home for spring break. I've seen him like once. <laughs> I was like, dude, am I going to get to see you at all? Yeah, ma. It's just nice knowing that his little his little heart's beating in the next room, even if I don't actually get to see him or hang out with him. I, he's like, he, he, the way he explained it to me, he apologized, oh, I just got some paint on here, and said, um, basically, unfortunately, I get to see him right after finals and midterms, which is not exactly an ideal time to be hanging out. 
I guess it's better than before, right? So the deal with um, Miss Lillian's is that it has a built-in top coat. So if you spill paint on your piece, once it's already dry, you could just wipe it off. It's a beautiful thing. Okay, let's lift that up. That looks really good. That looks so good. Thank you, thank you for suggesting that I do both. All right, let's go ahead and do the four corners. And this is so easy because this is the four corners of the piece. So I know I don't have to like worry if I'm if I'm exactly plumb, you know? Cause y'all, that I do not do that well. I'm not doing any more mid-century with like lines. That's just too much for me to handle. It's too much. Too many notes. I don't match things up well. All right. I'm really liking this though. I feel like we're getting the look that we talked about by just using all the other things we have. Maybe it was a blessing. Let's take the win that I couldn't find the dang stamps. All right. I'm just using a chalk brush for this. I, and then I'll wash it out. Let's see. Let us see. The paper, the paper, the paper. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Grace on Broadway. Um, follow Grace on Broadway and you will get to see when the paper comes out. I have to, I'm, I'm very anxious. I'm shipping it tomorrow. So, um, that's going to be interesting. So I bought some, I bought some big, big boxes. Um, but I'm shipping a few pieces. So I almost, I talked to Sadie Heather, I don't know if you're still on here, but I actually said to Sadie, you want to just drive to New Jersey with me and drop these off? But um, my week's not going to allow that. But I, I, I actually was thinking I would be less stressed about getting in my car and driving for six hours to bring you this artwork than I am about shipping it. Because I have complete shipping anxiety. Always. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, you know what? It doesn't need it. It doesn't need the rest of it. It just doesn't. Because I say so. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't. I love it. I love it. That's exactly kind of what I was going for. And it's kind of got a leaf motif. Let me flip it over so you guys can see. Isn't that cool? I gotta fill in these. And then what I was thinking, is filling those in this might be too big a pattern i think I, I do want to do another pattern there though i think what i'll do aha this is the pattern that we'll do this thin one let's look at that on your chest yes it would debbie yes it would pointing out in between on each long side you could do a corner pointing out in between. Oh, like here on each long side? Yes, I could do that too. I kind of like the idea of having... I kind of want to try this idea of having a double border. On the outside. Oh. Yeah, I am gonna run into where the stuff is, but I kinda wanna do this. Let's try this real quick. Doing a little additional border in there. That's the way I see these stamps, these Bohemia stamps being used is, um, you guys can see that, okay. Is like kind of doing a double, a double, a daily double. Let's try it. All right, and then kind of, going right in between there, giving a little bit of space. A little, it's hard because I don't want to press too hard. Oh yeah. Okay, so here's my theory on this. 
intricate wide rails going over. All right, I'll look at that. I like the balance of an intricate pattern and a bold pattern. Intricate, bold, intricate, bold, intricate, bold. So I like that this is bold, that's a little more intricate, and then as we're, and then these, I would say they're smaller, but they're bold. Okay, let's do that. Actually, I can do the whole thing down the side. Let's do that. And now that I have my ink on here, it's easier. And these aren't perfectly straight, you guys. They've got a little bit of a bend in them. Uh, and I believe that's on purpose, you know, to have it look a little bit more organic. And if I were being really precise, what I would do is I would stick this on this paper. Like I have a bunch of these that you can cut to shape where you put it on and then you can press it down without the risk of it um, scooching all over the place, but I'm just going to say it real to you. I do not have the patience for that. Do not have the patience for that at all. Um, that involves a level of preparedness that I just do not have. Um, all right, let's do this again here. overlap just to see how it looks. Now, another trick when you're doing these stamps is that if you do over stamp it or you do have too many, oh, thank you for the stars. Um, if you do over stamp it, uh, you can always wipe it back immediately or what I like to do sometimes is sand it back. So if I feel like, oh no, that's a little, it's a little too much going on right there, I can sand it back. So when it overlapped, it was actually just fine. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna load up a little bit here just to fit in these little spots where it didn't quite reach and not to worry too much about it overlapping. Like I said, we're kind of going for an organic look. Yeah, that looks good. I'm so glad that I'm over 50 and I don't, I think that a little bit messy looks good. <laughs> I remember my younger self would have been like, oh, no, I have to do the whole thing over again. It's so nice when you accept that a certain amount of flaws are inherent and actually make things look better and more real. Yeah. Now. I am feeling as though, ooh, I have an idea. I'm gonna put this all the way around. What do you guys think about maybe these leaves being on the inside? Maybe, maybe, maybe. I do kind of want to cover almost all of her piece with some kind of pattern because I actually think how do I put this? Oh, right. And we can't be perfect. I mean, yeah, totally. Um, I actually think that sometimes what makes something look too busy, if you're doing um, a stencil, is if you don't go far enough. That's why I like the bone inlay stencils. Like sometimes I feel like a stencil that's done on a portion of a piece, really brightly done, makes your eye go right there and it's kind of like ah! like right on that stencil I, and that could be even if it's a pretty stencil i didn't mean it would be ugly stencil i just mean that it makes your eye go right there and what i'm saying is is if you put the stencils and the design around the entire piece it just becomes part of the tapestry of the piece it's not about it's not about that stencil jumping off the page anymore is it it's about the it's about a texture it's kind of like uh, a painting versus wallpaper, you know? A painting is going to say, hey, 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 look at me, whereas wallpaper is all over the wall, 
right? And so um, you can then have a different focal point. So I just feel like I kind of want to cover almost this whole thing um, in order to have it be just part of the texture of the piece. I hope that makes sense. I just kind of made it up as I went, but that's how I feel. That's how I come up with all my ideas. All right, so we've got that. We'll let that dry, it'll just take a second. But what I was thinking, I don't know if I've left enough room now. Oh, I have, I've left enough room. If we, all right, so we'd have to go in the center. We'd have to figure out where center is for this to make sense. What do y'all think? Putting these in between. Okay, Betty was thinking corner piece pointing out between two corner pieces on the side. Oh, oh, you mean the, oh, the V? That might work. That might work really well. All right, Sue's in, Sue's in to the idea. So, oh God, is this gonna require math? No, I'm just gonna eyeball it. Okay, so if this is center, right, look how I'm doing this. This fits here, which means that's center. This is how I center things. <laughs> which means if I just slide this just like that, that's gonna be center enough. It's center adjacent. <laughs> That's good enough. I will put a little piece down and a little piece down. I swear, did I just brush my hair with this thing? There's so much of my hair here. Now, the question is, do I have top and bottom? So that leaf is going up into the top and these leaves are not. So I do need to come down a little bit more. So now that's touching. Look, I'm a firm believer that you can measure things absolutely perfectly and it still won't look right. It still won't look right. So we're going to the school of, we want it to look right whether or not it's actually right. So that is, um, that's coming down into my pattern a little and that's going up into my pattern a little. There we go. Should we just try it? Worst case scenario is we wipe it off. Actually, worst case scenario is we repaint the whole thing yellow again. But you know what? This is just one little area. I'm, I'm fine with that. I can't tell you how many things I've had to repaint because I wanted to experiment. I will tell you on my decoupage piece, um, I had it, I mean the piece that I'm submitting for my decoupage paper, I had it perfect. And by perfect, I mean there was nothing inherently, there was no mistakes. As, and as much as you can say there's mistakes in art, it looked, it looked just fine. That was yesterday at about 3 p.m. And I looked at it and I went, that is just fine. But then I had an idea. And I was like, here's how this could go, Sue. What's my saying? What's my saying? If you're not willing to completely fuck the whole thing up, you're not going hard enough. You're not going far enough. And I'm like, yeah, but you have a deadline and this thing needs to be done, packed, and in the mail. So Sue, this is the conversation in my head. So Sue, the idea that you are going to take something that is perfectly fine, is beautiful, that people will love just as is, and you are going to go and do something else. I make my stomach hurt just thinking about it. But I couldn't stop myself. I couldn't stop myself. Once I reveal it to you, I'll show you the before and after. So here's what happened. I did it. I actually made a TikTok of it, like that whole, um, girl, don't do it, girl, don't do it. I did it. I did it. So um, it took me about, I, I mapped it out in my head, and then I practiced 
the, the idea with my paintbrush over and over like in the air because I had to get it right. Because if I didn't get it right, I was gonna screw the whole thing up. And when you're working with acrylic paints, it's not like, like I didn't put down a coat and then decide, oh, I can just wipe it back. I should have done that. It was dumb. But I was just like flying without a net. And I said to myself, if you mess this up, you're gonna have to start over and then you're not gonna make your deadline and you're gonna do what you always do and then you're gonna be up working till midnight. <clears throat> but I realized that that voice, I did not feel like listening to because she is the one who stops me from doing things, but I knew that I wanted to make it better. And I knew that I had an idea and I knew I needed to practice what I preach, which is go for it. And if I had to stay up till midnight, because I messed it up. First of all, I didn't think there was a way I was gonna truly mess it up. And second of all, I'm really happy with what I did and I think he will be too. So I did it. <gasps> Just like now. Look at that. Now I was gonna go all the way across, but honestly, I don't even know if it needs it. I don't know if it needs it. All right, let's step back. Let me turn the camera around. Oh, I, I just like all of them. And I also want Lori to look at it. If Lori's not here. So, bold, intricate, bolder, bold. Oh, I see your point. Yes, I probably could have gone... One, two, three. Yeah, that could work. I think instead I'll probably just fill in a half and a half. But yeah, that's a really good idea. But how are we feeling about this, you guys? So, all right, so I think we're gonna, we're gonna stop there. Not because I couldn't go totally on a roll, but I do want to check in with my client and make sure that she likes uh, the decisions that we're making. I think I will take Betty's advice and put a little corner on the edge connecting these two. I think if that fits, let me look real quick. I think if that fits, that that would be, let's look and see. I think this is what you mean, Betty. If not, this is what I'm meaning you to mean. So right here where these two go, pull that down a little bit, try to match it up. Oh, it's stuck. And try to, yeah, yeah, do that. I think that'll look really cool. I think that'll look really cool. So we'll do that. I'll come over and do that. I'll decide about that. I'm really glad. And you guys, I would not have found this. This was hidden in the bottom of my, of the bathroom, like underneath all of these different um, trays. I would not have found it if I wasn't desperately trying to find those stamps. Yeah, I get all my stamps from Royal Design Studio. All right, so I'll do that. That'll give it a nice look. And then I do want to think about where I might do some of this. Now, I love using these, and they will be very beautiful to use, but they are less precise. So we'll, I might like use it here to go up the sides or something, but we have to keep in mind that... I haven't used that stencil in a long time. I actually haven't used that one in particular, that square one. Oh my gosh, what color is it? It's red. Oh, we used it on the chair. Angela, you just said that and I just looked down. We used it on the chair, but that was a few months ago. Um, but yeah, that's the last time we used it. So you guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me, chatting with me, helping me find the stamps. I'm so glad we found the stamps. <laughs> Royal Design Studio Stencils. Yes, I have an affiliate link if you guys want to use it. Um, hi, Cherie. Let's see, any questions that I missed? Oh, yes, Liz, uh, Royal Design Studio Stencils. I'm not sure which one this is. 
Um, I'm not sure if they even still make it, but let me make sure. They probably do. I would say look for Moroccan. I think that's how I found it. Let me see if there's any other comments. Oh, yes, the leaf. Okay. I think I got it. All right, you guys, uh, wish me luck. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to check in. I'm going to send a picture to Lori. If she likes it, oh, my. If she likes it, then we will, we will keep rocking and rolling. Okay? Bye, everybody.